Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine Effects YouTube channel. So today's tutorial is actually a sample lesson from the free Game of Thrones visual effects course which I released a few days ago. In the course I will walk you through a total of seven complete shots start to finish just like you're used to from my tutorials. We go over some exciting fire effects, some liquid simulation basics, some tie flow, some ice growth effects, definitely a lot to learn. There are hundreds of people taking the course this weekend, so definitely join in on the fun while it's available for free. And with that said, enjoy lesson number two from the course, tie flow destruction. In this lesson number two, we're going to cover breaking with tie flow, and I'll show you how to set up and render these scenes here of the dragon breaking apart. Now a quick word about the 3D models. I just found a free model of the dragon on sketchfab.com. I'm going to include this link under the video so you can download the model if you want. Now just be aware that it was not natively made for 3ds Max and when I imported it in um, there's a bunch of issues with the model with some overlapping vertices and some bad polygons. I knew that I was pretty much only going to show the head area, so I wasn't too worried about the issues up here in the wings. But if you watch closely, there are some issues happening as it starts breaking apart. Like back here, we have some popping geometry, and that's just because the model is really dense and there's a lot of triangles and all that. So ideally when you do this effect you would find a perfect 3d model with good topology you know something with quads that will just work well but i just needed a free model to make this effect happen on and this worked for what i was trying to do but it's just something that i want you to be aware of so we're actually going to hide the dragon for now and just create a simple box first and what I like to do is just set everything up on a geometry that's as simple as possible. And when my setup is working, then I will swap the box with the dragon because there's really no reason to make everything slower, make your workflow slower and make tie flow work harder when really you're just trying to figure out how to set this effect up. And then when you figured it out, you can just come back and input your high-res model or whatever you need for the final effect. So we are just going to start with the box and then I'm going to make another smaller box like this and put it at the beginning of this one. So basically what's happening is we have an activator box that's moving from left to right and it's basically telling Typhlow Whenever this box comes in contact with this box, I want something to happen. So we're going to set a condition that will basically tell Typhlow to break this blue box whenever this yellow box comes in contact with it. So let me just make sure this is in correct position and it is. So let's just start at the beginning, set a keyframe, and then you can go to frame 100 and move it maybe back here and set a keyframe. So super simple, we just have something like this happening. And then we can create a Typhlow object. Be sure that you've downloaded the newest version of Typhlow just to make sure that we are on the same page. If you are completely new to Typhlow, you can go to beta.typhlow.com and here you can download Typhlow for free for your version of Max and V-Ray. So with this created, we can just open the Typhlow editor. And basically first thing we need to do is tell Typhlow to convert this blue box into a particle, which then we will be able to break apart. So I'm going to drag out a birth object operator and I'm going to say pick and I'm gonna pick this blue box. So if you scrub the timeline, nothing has really happened. And that's because we need to go under display and set the display type to geometry. So now we have a tie flow particle, which has the exact same shape as our blue box. So I'm going to select the blue box and hide it. So all I see is tie flow. 
So in order for you to break something apart, you have to fracture it first. So I'm going to drag out a Voronoi fracture operator and put it right under birth object. And you can enable etched faces and you can see that already it's been broken up into 10 points. So I'm going to set this to something higher just to make it more interesting. So maybe 250. So now we have these fragments, but nothing is still happening. And that's because we need to turn these fragments into a physics object that will be affected by gravity. So we can drag out a physics shape and put it under Voronoi fracture. And now you can see that right away all of those fragments are affected by gravity. They fall to the ground and they break. That's good that that's working. That's a good start. But obviously we need to control when and how this breaking occurs. So just to recap, the problem we're trying to figure out right now is how do I tell Tyflo to only break these pieces when they come in contact with the box? So the first thing we need to do is actually just disable them from falling altogether and then enable the falling again using a condition. So I'm going to drag out a physics switch operator and put it under physics shape and set it to kinematic. So right now the box is broken up, the pieces are physics shapes, but they're currently kinematic objects, meaning they're not really being affected by any forces or interacting in any way. In order for us to tell Tyflo to use this box as an activator for the destruction, we need to set up a condition. So everything that's yellow here is a condition that you can use to tell Tyflo to basically do something if something else is happening. So you can say, if there is a collision between two objects, I want something to happen. If the object fulfills some kind of a property test, such as if they're moving at a certain speed or if they're a certain size, then I want something else to happen. Surface test is good for, if you have the pieces hitting the ground, you can say, if the pieces hit the ground, I want them to break even more. So these conditions are really where you will spend a lot of time when setting up any type of destruction setups. So we could use a surface test or an object test for this, but I'm going to use a surface test and just drag it out here. But again, still nothing is happening. So we need to pick this yellow box and let's just make it an actual yellow color. I'm not really sure what this color is. So let's just make it orange. So now we need to create another physics switch and drag it out here and connect it to the surface test and set this to activate and set the display to geometry again. So I just changed the color of the Typhlo particle here to blue to make it easier to explain. So basically what we're telling Typhlo right now is I want you to check if the orange box is coming in contact with the blue particle and if it is then I want you to break it again using this switch. And then we need to add another condition. So let's just add a property test and put it under the physics switch. And basically what I'm trying to accomplish is tell Typhlo to break these pieces further whenever they start moving. So I'm going to select test type velocity magnitude and velocity is just another name for speed. And I'm going to say if they're moving faster than 0.1 then I want the test to be true and therefore I can send it to another event where I can break them further. So I'm going to create another Voronoi fracture and another physics shape and I'm going to connect the two and set the display again to geometry and let's change the color to maybe yellow just so we can see everything better. So now what's happening is we get these big blue chunks that are being further broken apart into the yellow chunks as they start falling down. And that's pretty much exactly what I did for the dragon here. The playing field is open for you to try and experiment with this however you would like. You can always add more detail just by going back to the Voronoi fracture and maybe doing you know, 400 points for the initial breaking and then you can go into the secondary breaking and do something like 50 and this way you will get a ton more detail happening as this starts breaking apart. Now maybe what I would say I don't like is that the pieces now shatter all together and there's just too many small pieces all at once. 
Maybe I would prefer for some of the chunks to remain big, at least for a few frames before they break further. So you can add a physics bind. And physics bind will basically just glue or bind some of these fragments together. And then you can break them based on more conditions. So right now it updated and you can see that the pieces, even though they're fragmented, they're stuck together into these big chunks. So what you can do now is go under bind breaking and enable breaking by force. And so now you're basically telling Typhlow if the blue chunks are being affected by a force that's greater than 10,000, I want you to break them further. So that doesn't really happen until they hit the ground over here when they are, you know, faced with so much force that they break. And that's a really nice effect that you can use for building destructions and all sorts of very intricate destruction effects. But for our specific effect, I'm going to set this lower to something like 2500 and let it update. And basically, now you can see that they start out as being big chunks, which we like. So we can see, you know, you can see beautifully here, the headpiece starts as a big piece. And as it starts falling down, it breaks into these smaller pieces. So that's exactly what's happening here. We get the big chunk first, and as it starts falling down, it reaches the 2500 force, and then it breaks even more. So you can play with this number to control how much these pieces are or aren't staying stuck together. So maybe I can raise this um, to raise the threshold, so now more of the pieces will remain together instead of breaking until they reach further speed. So I'm going to leave this up to you to play with and don't forget, definitely play around with these conditions. Try and drag out every single one and just test it and read the settings. And just by doing that, you will get so many ideas for effects and cool stuff that you can do. It's really about not being intimidated by Typhlow and learning how to have fun with it and try and create some fun effects because as soon as you understand how all of these conditions work you can create some very very interesting effects so i'm gonna say that i'm happy with this setup so the last step would be to switch this blue box with our dragon so let me go back to frame zero just so the tie flow isn't calculating anything and i'm gonna say unhide all just to bring back our dragon model and i'm gonna isolate it by hitting alt q you could load this entire model into Typhlow, but it would be very slow because this is such a dense model. There's so much resolution. It's going to take a long time for Typhlow to process this whole thing. Just like I tell you guys in my courses and tutorials, always try and think about what the final effect that you're going for is and adjust your scene accordingly. So I knew that I was going to use just the head area. So I actually went just into the model, selected the polygon, and I deleted everything else. Now before I do that, I will always just hold shift and drag and make a copy and hide this one in case I want to come back to it before I completely destroy it. But right now I would just select everything that I know I will not need and just delete it. And this way I'm saving myself a ton of computing resources and I'm going to make everything faster by doing this. Now the issue is that the model has to be a closed geometry. You can't have an open geometry like this. So I'm going to find a nice sort of transition point like this and delete all that. And I'm going to convert it into an editable poly. Select border, select this border edge and say cap. So obviously this back area looks really bad, but all we care about is the front, which still looks pretty okay. So I still have my dragon head and it is a closed geometry. So now I can get out of isolation mode, select tie flow. And before I do that, actually, let me put the dragon effect pivot center to object. And let's move the dragon in the way of our orange box, which we already animated. So maybe rotate it, something like this, move it back. And let's go into tie flow. And for a birth object, I'm gonna remove the blue box. I'm gonna say pick and 
pick the dragon head. So now it has updated and we can just hide the original blue box and we can also hide the dragon head. So all we see is the Typhlo particle of the dragon head. And now if I drag, you can see that our setup is still working exactly the way we wanted it to. And I can still go back to the physics bind and maybe increase the force to something like 7500 just because I would like some of these chunks to be stuck together more. And here you go. So that's working exactly the way we want. That's pretty much the final effect. You can right click on the activator box and go to object properties, make it not renderable and display as box. Now in order for you to be able to render Typhlo, you need to add a mesh operator. So I'm going to add one under every single flow like that. That's all you need to do. So now it's going to render just fine. And for the rendering, again, I'm doing V-Ray next. Let me do bucket for the image sampler, two, four, and we can do 2,500 for sub diffs or something like 2,000 should be fine. And we can go under materials and let's create a standard V-Ray material. Let's make it almost pure black. So something like three over here and let's give it a bunch of reflection and I would like it to be shiny. So something like 0.91 for the glossiness and you can apply that to the Typhlo object and you can create a V-Ray light. like this and maybe let's give it three for the multiplier go to options make it invisible and we can turn on the V-Ray IPR and let me raise the light up here like this and then I would just create my camera to see how things are looking so let me do control C And don't forget to enable motion blur and let's maybe rotate the camera a little bit to give it that angle just like in my example and maybe I'll move it like that. So I think that's very close to what I did and I think I would just maybe move the light back here just to get some of these nicer hard shadows back here. And what I like to do is just hold shift and drag and make another light and just give it maybe like 0.5 multiplier, something very subtle, just to get a little bit of light coming from below, just so that it's not completely black on the bottom. So you can see even here, I have a little bit of a reflection going on. So maybe I can even make it something like 0.3, just very subtle, trying to keep the contrast in there. As always, don't forget about movement. So you can select the camera, set a key, go to frame 100, and maybe move the camera a little bit just to give it some nice movement maybe move it down now we have the dragon sort of breaking and the camera is turning long just like it does in my example here so just render that out and then for my post-production basically let me show you this was my raw render i just added some curves for contrast so you can just play with that. And then I added a optical flare uh, on top. So I would just, you know, go under effect optical flares and then set the layer to add. And under options, what I would do is just clear all and then select just the basic glow. And you can just put the glow up here and the light covering the scene will just help blend everything together. So it looks less CG. Pretty simple. If you're new to Typhlow, I hope that this was a nice little introduction for you. Definitely try and play around with all of the conditions and some interesting destruction. If you follow the lesson, I would love to see your result. You can always um, DM me on Instagram. If you're not following me, be sure to follow me. I post all the new updates about new tutorials in the stories and all that. So thanks again for watching. I hope that you guys found this helpful and I'll see you in the next lesson.